This is my soapbox. This will be my sermon. Not really. Close, though. It's going to be less dogmatic than that. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 23rd thousand repetition of the What If Conference. Hopefully you'll understand what that means by the end of this thing. Uh, what wonderful questions, what dangerous perhaps as we inquire about tonight. What if we replaced war? What if the, you know, we didn't replace war and it actually happened? All that kind of stuff. But I dare to say that I ask the most dangerous question of them all. What if, you guys, you know, time moved in a circle? That doesn't exactly sound super exciting initially because you think of all this, you know, you think of like physics and that's not exactly the most exciting area. But I agree with the late great philosopher Martin Heidegger when he says that making itself intelligible is suicide for philosophy. And so I'll move in some pretty mysterious ways here. <laughs> but my overlords disagree with my interpretation of philosophy and Heidegger and so they require I make myself intelligible. I'll provide a few definitions in hopes of circumventing them. So eternal is defined as existing outside of time, which is kind of an interesting definition for a talk that's supposed to be about time. Nonetheless, imminent means existing within and transcendent means existing outside of. So say you have a toy army man. If the toy army man works because of the cogs within him and you know, like electricity or like you wind it up or something like that, that would be an imminent explanation. A transcendent one would be like, it works through the laughter and wonderment of children all across the globe. That would be a transcendent ex explanation. Oscillating means moving back and forth. So it was like the cogs, and then the laughter, and then the cogs, and then the laughter. That would be an oscillating explanation of how the toy army man works. <sighs> <laughs> yes. Out of respect for Heidegger, I must rephrase my topic once more. What if there is no transcendence? That's, in essence, what I think that my question is about. Uh, I realize I'm not making friends here, like I just promised to kill magic. That, like, I, it's not exactly the most popular thing I can do. Um, so, let's get at the essence of the question though, and then reach the transcendent stuff. So, what's a circle? A circle is a, you know, something like all points are equidistant from the center, blah, 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 something like that. But what's really critical is how circles are different from lines. See, that's interesting. Uh, a line typically has a beginning and an end and some stuff that happens in the middle. Circle doesn't have that. Circle goes like this. Uh, so you might think of like uh, your life as being like a line. You know, you're born, you live your life, and then, you know, that happens. <laughs> I won't talk about it. Uh, but, um, you know, you typically when you live your life, you desire something beyond what happens in the middle because that's kind of unsatisfying because it comes to an end. You desire something like transcendence. Normally this is like a god or a series of gods or a community which might be the same thing, you know, something beyond yourself that you think is more important than the life that you live. You're, you want transcendent meaning in your life. But if time was a circle, there wouldn't be a beginning and an ending. In a circle, if you scale down small enough, like if the circle's really huge and you're really small, then when you look at it, it's going to appear like a straight line. But my question is, what if it was actually a circle? So this means that rather than having a traditional beginning and an ending, a circle simply runs in one direction. Picking a starting point or an ending point is really kind of arbitrary. I mean, we kind of pick the top because it's pretty, but that's arbitrary. Like, we just pick it because it's pretty. And that's not satisfying. Instead, the circle simply keeps going. It doesn't have a start and an ending point. So a way that we might imagine this in terms of our universe is what's called oscillating universe theory. And I'm going to make this brief. It's mostly an explanatory thing. So there's the Big Bang, right? Everything's really, really tiny, like my hands. And then it bursts out, right? The universe gets really big. It's currently expanding right now. They theorize that like maybe gravity will win out. Things will start coming back, start coming back, start coming back, get really small again. Then they burst out again because the same physical laws are at work. It's going to cause it to burst out again. So it goes in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Physical laws cause the same things to happen in the exact same way every time. You're caused by a series of causes before you. All these are determined initially by the fundamental physical laws that determine how it bangs out. So you're determined the exact same way. 
And also, they have this other theory that if the oscillating universe theory is wrong and everything keeps expanding, then it's going to, like, it's really strange. They think it's, like, going to expand so much that everything expands into nothingness and then nothingness expands into something. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but it's useful for me. But the point is, is that not only does everything occur as it's in a line, everything recurs. Everything happens over and over and over again, exactly the same way that it happened initially. Your life, you're hearing me right now, will happen again, exactly as it just happened. I'll make the same hand gestures. You'll still think they're weird. <laughs> so what does this mean for you? I'm going to be a bit more serious now and do something that you might not like. I'm going to have to ask you to imagine the worst moments of your entire damn life. The most painful moment. The moment where you realize you are, in essence, alone. Where you felt the greatest suffering. You felt your existence was a transient accident of an uncaring universe. Despair overwhelms your entire existence where you even stare at the most valuable thing and see it as nauseating nothingness. The stars above hear your desperate screams of relief, but not another moment passes. It is the twilight of the idols. I dare say, Pasco, do not collect $200, you go straight to jail. <laughs> Worst moment ever. And it keeps happening over and over and over. You never escape from this absolute suffering. Because each moment is eternal. Because if everything recurs infinitely, then each moment will happen an infinite number of times, which means it's, in essence, eternal. It will continue to happen. It will be lived again and again, repeated infinitely for all eternity. Each moment you'll feel this suffering. But I dare say that if we are brave enough fellows, we might fight on. In this, if we are inventive enough artists, we might find a meaning for suffering precisely in its meaninglessness. To say that our suffering is meaningless is to absolve ourselves. I'm going to use some Christian terms here, but I mean this more generally. Specifically, if everything recurs exactly as it happened before, everything's innocent. I'm not, a, like, I don't suffer because I'm a born sinner. I suffer for absolutely no reason at all. It means that I'm free. It means I can do whatever I want. And moreover, it might allow us to focus on something that I'm going to call the moment, and I'm going to capitalize the moment because I think it's that important. Philosophers do that. They just, like, like a word, so they capitalize it. In this moment, which is the moment that you live right now, which is infinitely small because it's ever-passing, it's kind of like this trace in the moment, you have the ability to decide eternity. You have the ability to decide whether or not you would live this life, whether you would etch this into eternity itself. And so in this way, we might uh, be brave enough to make ourselves artists such that we would want to live each life or each day over and over and over and over again so that we would begin to live a life that's more beautiful, that's something worth living eternally. Plato elegantly demonstrated that we're all in this cave. Nietzsche elegantly demonstrated, also, we would never leave it. So, thank you all for providing me this moment to etch into my own beautiful cave of eternity. I would do it again and again.